Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to continue with our player click detection. Last time we had click detection that would damage the player. This time we're going to add another layer to that and actually keep track of how many kills we get. So just like before, whenever I click on the player, it's going to do damage to them. And then when I actually kill this player, it's going to record a kill over in the leader stats. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and get started by writing a script for the leader stats, and then I'll show you what we have to change in our scripts from before so that we can keep track of kills. To make the leader stats script, we're gonna be adding a new script into server script service. So just go ahead and click on the plus sign and then add a script. I went ahead and renamed the script we did last time to damage, and the new one we're gonna call leader stats. On this script, we're gonna say game dot players dot player added colon connect Inside the parentheses, we're going to put function. The first thing we're going to do inside this function is make a leader stats folder. So we'll say local leader stats. And that's going to be equal to instance dot new. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put quotation marks and then folder. Next, we'll say leader stats dot name. And that's going to be equal to leader stats inside of quotation marks. And finally, we'll say leader stats dot parent. And that's going to be equal to the player. And I just realized we didn't pass the player inside this function here. So inside the parentheses next to function, let's go ahead and say PLR. So this is going to be the player that joins the game. And that's where we're going to store the leader stats folder with. So right here, we'll say equal to and then PLR. Next, we're going to create a value inside the leader stats where we're going to keep track of kills. So we'll say local kills. And that's going to be equal to instance dot new. This time we're going to be creating an int value. So just a number. After that, we're going to say kills dot name. That's going to be equal to kills inside of quotation marks. And then we're going to put this value inside the leader stats folder by saying kills dot parent is equal to leader stats. And that's all we need for the leader stats script. So let's go ahead and run the code and just verify that it's working. And there we go. Everything looks good. So I have a leaderboard with my name and the amount of kills. Let's go ahead and move on now to the other scripts and see what we have to modify to keep track of kills. All right. So this is the script that we had from last time. And basically all the script is doing so far is whenever the remote event gets triggered from the local side, it's going to deal 10 hit points of damage to whichever player was clicked on. What we want to add to the script is a couple lines of code so that we can detect when the clicked player dies and then award a kill to the player that clicked on them. To do that, the first thing we're going to do is store the clicked player's current health. So we're going to say local player health. And that's going to be equal to clicked player dot character dot humanoid dot health. So whenever we click on a player, their current health is going to be stored here. And to check to see if they would die or not when we click on them, what we're going to do is say if player health minus damage amount, if that is less than or equal to zero, then that would mean that the player has died. So in that case, what we want to do is award the player who clicked on them a kill. To do that, we're going to say player. So that's the player who clicked on the other player dot leader stats dot kills dot value and then we're going to say plus equals one so that's going to add one to their kills value we do need to add one more check to this line right here and that's to make sure that the player that we're clicking on is alive that way we don't award a bunch of kills by clicking on a dead person we can check to make sure the player is alive by making sure that health is greater than zero and we can add that by saying player health And then we're going to say greater than zero. To check both statements, we're just going to say and. So first, we want to make sure that the player we're clicking on is alive by making sure they have some health. And then we're going to check to see if we would kill that player by taking a look at their current health, subtracting the damage amount, and seeing if that's less than or equal to zero. So if the player currently has 15 hit points, 15 minus 10 would not be less than zero, so that player still has some health. But once the player health gets to something like maybe 7, 
7 minus 10 is less than 0. That would be a kill. And in that instance, we want to give the player who clicked on the other player a kill. Okay, and that's what we have to add to this script to check to see if we killed a player. So let's go and run the code and make sure that tracks in the leader stats. Okay, so let's check to make sure it works. So we should be able to damage the player. And then once that player dies, we get a kill. And we can see when we click on this dead player, nothing happens. And we could stop here if we wanted to, but one thing that we probably want to change in the script is the distance that we can actually click and kill the player. So right now, even if I'm super far away and I click on this player, I would still be able to damage them and kill them. So what we're going to do is adjust the local script a little bit so that we can set a click distance so that we can't click from across the map and kill players. To set that up, we're going to be opening the local script that we have in starter player scripts. On this script, what we need to do is figure out how far away the clicked player is, and then set up some limit, maybe like 25 studs. And if the player is within that 25 studs, then we're going to damage them. If they're farther away than 25 studs, then we won't do anything. To do that, we're going to start inside this if statement here. So after we detect that we have a player, we're going to calculate the distance from the clicked player to the player who clicked them. So we're going to do that by saying local distance. And this is going to be kind of a long line, but we're going to start with parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we're going to say clicked player dot character dot humanoid root part. And then we're going to say dot position. And then we're going to subtract that from player dot character dot humanoid root part. dot position. So we're going to take those two different positions, the position of the clicked player and the position of the player who's clicking the other player, and we're going to get the distance between them by taking the magnitude. So outside the parentheses, we're going to say dot magnitude. So all this big line is doing is taking those two different positions and giving us a distance. While we're testing, let's go ahead and print the distance so we can see how far away it is. And then we're going to set up our distance limit. So let's go ahead and define this in a variable. So we'll say local and then click distance. And let's go ahead and set that equal to 25. So within a 25 stud radius, we're going to be able to damage and kill players. And then down here, we're just going to say if distance is less than or equal to click distance. Then what we're going to do is fire the remote event. All right, so let's go ahead and test this out and see if it works. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is just walk away from the player a little bit so that I'm obviously more than 25 studs away. When I click on this player here, you can see it gives me a distance of 72.5, and you can also see that the player is not getting damaged. If I move a little bit closer, now I'm about 55, but at that point I'm still outside the 25 stud radius, so let's get a little bit closer. 28, so almost there. And then once I get within that 25 stud radius, then I'm going to start damaging the player. If I walk outside of it again, then I'm no longer to damage the player. Only when I get within 25 studs am I able to damage and kill that player. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. If you have any other ideas for click detection on players, go ahead and let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the next one.